This is going to be a walkthrough of how I created a, this texture in Substance Painter because the smart material that I provided uh, to create this um, or the file itself even uh, is not loadable in older versions of Substance Painter and this is not even the most recent so that's a problem that we're going to be running into uh, when I provide uh, Substance Painter files or smart materials. So if anybody has a workaround for how to get uh, Substance Painter files or smart materials to work in older versions, uh, let me know. And I'll do some research as well. But I wanted to show you how we created this, which is sort of the uh, plastic wrapped pipe from uh, the Solaris Corridor. And uh, first of all came the model. And it's not low poly. Um, it's, it's not very high poly, but what I've done is uh, I'm going to hide this stuff and I'll hide that. So I've just got a cylinder. Now I just took D, uh, the default, I think it's 32 vertices. Well, you know, you certainly wouldn't need that much, but I was just, you know, showing how to do it. But anyways, uh, it's just a cylinder and I've got a seam down, down the middle. And I've given this a material, I've called it in. It's just easier to isolate things um, by having the different materials. You could probably do it as, as one. And then on top of that, I've got this. Now, what I did is I just duplicated the cylinder, uh, scaled it larger, and then pinched it in at various spots. So let's see, let's hide that stuff. And I, I pinched it and see I had three edges here and I pinched in that and I pulled, pulled it this way and that way. Uh, I added another uh, edge loop here so I could sort of expand it outwards a bit. And then I just went around with proportional editing on and just pinched it around here and there. You could certainly do a nicer job with sculpting, um, but that's, that's basically what I did. And then on top of that, I've got these bands uh, that there are slightly deformed uh, as well. And this stuff has the out material and out material. So I've got in and out. So I've got just two materials. Then I created an FBX flat. And by the way, that's obviously not long enough. That was just showing how you could do it. But one other thing I should say uh, is I put a solidify on this uh, and I applied it and I, you know, and I, and I unwrapped this and really I could have done more work on it. It was just, I just want to show somebody how I, how I could do this. And so over here in Substance Painter, you can see I've got the in and the out material. If I look at the in material, uh, this was the effect that I sort of saw in the reference image. And so what I did for that is I just brought in um, an aluminum metal as a, as a material. All right. And I've got metallic all the way up. I brought the roughness up a, a little bit. But I brought the height all the way up so that I could add a black mask and then in the black mask, I added a fill, a fill layer here. And in the grayscale, I added the stripes. And if I scroll down, I really didn't do anything here. If I scroll down here, you can see that I brought the shift, which was like that or something. And I brought it that way. And then I would have had to rotate this 90 degrees. So now I have these long stripes. And I just chose how many stripes I wanted and roughly how thick I wanted them. And uh, that was that. But without the blur, it looks like this. All right, so when you start off, it looks like that. It may not be very pleasing. I added the blur, and I actually brought the blur up. Um, here, where is it? Here's the blur. A reasonable amount. I think it starts at 0.5, and, and I just felt that wasn't enough, and I wanted more. And so this is this is what I got, and uh, that's that's the inside part. Now, if I come to just look at the outside part, this one has a little bit more to it. So I'm going to start, I guess, at the bottom here. So let's, let me just turn off all this stuff, everything, and I'll come to here. So you can see I've got this plastic glossy pure. So I dragged over a plastic glossy, it would have been blue, I guess. And then I came in here and I adjusted it and I wanted it, you know, a little bit, a little bit blue and a little bit more white. Um, I lowered the roughness down to about there. It probably came in with even lower roughness, so even more shiny. So maybe I brought the roughness up just a little bit, not too much. But I also added some metallic, and I know that kind of violates some principle of uh, it's either metallic or it's not. It's either one or zero. But I just felt it looked kind of good if I had that had had that up. So that's that's just something I did. 
but of course we needed to get this clear or um, transparent and so I came over to my uh, shader and I switched this to here to PBR metallic rough with alpha blending so I did that so I needed that but in order to use that I also had to come to my texture set settings and in here in my channels I had to add opacity by clicking the plus here and just finding opacity and I added opacity then I could come back to this main layer here and I would have had this you know opacity so this is what it looked like you know without any opacity and then I added opacity and I just played around until I felt I could see the inside well enough you know and that's you know basically how it looked initially you could experiment with whether or not you want the thickness on this whether you wanted to use solidify uh, or not um, I just felt it looked better with it and then you know you wouldn't have just you know invisible because there's no faces facing outwards there so that's that first main layer and then above that is just whatever you want to do so I've got let's see what I've got here plastic glossy I guess I copied this layer and this is the layer actually or one of the layers where I get the sort of the creases and so I had this as you know I don't know what I've done here it's white uh, I, I've got a little bit higher roughness so that it's not uh, the creases which we'll talk about more in a second weren't completely shiny I've got my height up and I've got my a little some opacity on that because you know you, you don't want to have these so you can't see through them at all but you can experiment with what you want to do there so I had that as my main layer I added a black mask I added a fill and then in the fill in the grayscale I looked for this crease now if I type in crease you know there are a couple of different ones so I believe I used this first one creased uh, and I played with the balance I played with the contrast and for the noise these are the values I I ended up using here that gets I got a scale of three a disorder of 0.72 and some and some warp and you can you know play around with this stuff until you get what what you like um, I've left this the uh, tiling at one I did experiment with stretching it this and that way I'm just on UV projection and that's what I had and that was starting to look okay and then I guess I decided well I'm going to I'm just going to uh, duplicate that uh, to accentuate it and you see I've even got the bevel out we'll see that and this one is creases soft so that's the other uh, that's the other one so I, I just added another layer of creases played around this is my balance and contrast here are my noise values okay this one has some different parameters to it so I played around with those until I got an effect I liked um, it looks like I have this as one and one I guess I unlock this so I could strength you know uh, stretch it out a tiny bit I'm still on UV projection but I've changed the rotation a little bit so that they weren't all like you know going down the pipe or across the pipe so you know went in slightly different directions and I seem to feel that was better let me just see what it looks like with the bevel I debated if I like that or not and in the end I said I'm just gonna leave it like that all right so those were the two main things and then um, now you'll notice that the bands here also end up with the opacity and um, you can see that I've got them dark here um, and the the trick to doing that is just that in in the properties here if you have say okay I don't want these to have opacity or I want them transparent if you leave that off you say okay I want color and roughness I want a brown and and uh, a little bit shiny but not too much you go well they're still transparent just turn this on and make the opacity full otherwise you know it's like that so that's uh, and I didn't spend any time on these bands and I didn't really uh, unwrap this very very nicely or anything I just wanted to do a quick test because somebody needed something and I want to say well here's one way you could sort of do it so you could put a fabricy kind of thing on there or a rope or you could do better bands you know I just did cylinders around there and then I added a little bit of roughness variation uh, with clouds and for roughness variation you just set just roughness in a certain thing then you add a black mask and then you add some kind of uh, you know grunge or whatever and it, it may not be very noticeable at all there's just a slight bit of, of that 
and then I added some dirt and I played around for a while. It's tough to get dirt, I find, to look good on on transparent or mostly tr translucent things, but uh, just added a little bit and you could experiment more with that. So the two texture sets, the inside with the stripes, the outside with various levels of, of uh, first of all, your first level with transparency on or opacity, and then I did two creases, and then the, the bands with the opacity all the way up, and then some variations uh, and stuff like that. So that's how I achieved that. And so if you happen to be on the Patreon and where I've, uh, I, I believe I, I've provided this or maybe I just emailed this to a guy, maybe it's not up there. But if I ever do put stuff up and uh, you can't get the Substance Painter file to open, let's say, or the Smart Material, you know, let me know and we'll see what we can do. Uh, about that if there is anything or if there's something you really liked and uh, we just can't get the file to work then I can do a video on how I made it or something along that line to help you out all right so that's going to be it for this video thanks for watching and I know it's a very kind of specific uh, thing that may not apply to everyone but uh, you know if you if you want I, I would suggest uh, making a model like this and, and doing this and just storing it somewhere in case you ever need, you know, plastic wrap around. Like you'll often see in games like The Last of Us, uh, you know, there's there's uh, boxes on pallets or whatever in the courtyard and they're wrapped. And maybe this plastic might not be good, but maybe it's more like a tent fabric on it. But this might be useful. At least the crease idea is very useful for blankets and pillows and, and uh, wrappings of other sorts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.